I stand here so inspired by all the activists in Syria who risk their lives every day to bring us their stories. Over the past two years, I've seen firsthand the sacrifices they make to show the world what is happening, asking in return only that we not turn our eyes from this unbelievable suffering. In 2012, Witness embarked on an intensive program to support the use of human rights video in the Syria conflict. The people we support, many of them ordinary citizens, have become skilled filmmakers, archivists, and media correspondents using video to expose abuses in their communities. The established media have little to no access into Syria, making the media created by these citizens essential to mobilizing a global response to the crisis. It is literally because of them that we have a human face on the conflict. They have also given us an enormous video archive that we hope one day can be used as legal evidence of war crimes. Rami is one of these amazing individuals. He is not only a valuable ally, but a dear friend. We've worked through the difficult times and continue to inspire one another every day. While he was not able to join us tonight, he prepared remarks that he asked me to read on his behalf. I am so proud to be part of this witness gathering. We are here celebrating the courage of those whose stories are rarely told because they must work anonymously and because their lives are at great risk. When brutal things happen in far off places, they are hard to imagine. Even for me, having seen the atrocities in Syria myself, the brutality is sometimes beyond my grasp. But thanks to media activists, we do not have to imagine. Thanks to millions of ordinary people who are filming what is happening, we can all be witnesses. And once you are a witness, you feel an urge to do something. I believe all people share that urge. It is why we flood the streets and join protests. It is why we pick up cameras when we see persecution. It is why we are all here tonight. We know our neighbors are suffering, and so we come to celebrate the courage of those who are telling us their stories. It is why I became an activist. I moved to Damascus in 2004 and lived under the limitations and indignities of the Assad regime. When the protests started in 2011, I rushed to join, and I joined with my video camera. I saw the military firing into crowds of people. I saw bombs being dropped on family homes. Simply because I had a camera, I could show these things to the world as well. But also because I had a camera, I was in danger. I worked under the pseudonym Alexander Page. I was arrested and tortured, but I was not murdered only because I did not know who I was. When the government finally discovered my real name, I gathered my wife and child, and we left our home within the hour. We luckily made across the border into Jordan and into Egypt. There, I co-founded the NNU Media Association, Syria's first independent free media agency, to support media activists working inside Syria by all means possible financially, technically, and morally. We knew that citizens were creating the only objective journalism in many areas in Syria, one of the most media repressed places in the world. And they needed support to reach professional levels. Enna has since begun a private radio station that broadcasts into Syria and a press service that provides investigative reports that appear in newspapers across the Arab world and to, and to the international community. I would like to mention here a friend, Barra al bushi a young officer who defected from the Syrian army during an attack on an anti-government protest in Damascus. On that day, he said, I have defected, 
but I will not turn against this army with arms or kill to gain justice. Justice for me will come through shedding light on the truth. That was the day that Barat threw down his weapon and picked up a camera. It is a devastating reality that Barra is no longer in this world. He had decided to set out to a small town in Damascus that was under attack and was murdered there by government forces. He died with his camera in his hands. As long as this war continues, the dangers to activists will not go away. In the past few years alone, we witnessed a barbaric reminder with the murders of James Foley, Stephen Sutloff, and David Haynes. I knew James and Stephen as journalists and as friends. Just before his last trip, I urged Stephen not to go into Syria. But he followed that urge to do something, to witness the stories of people trapped and isolated by war. For his courage, Stephen was killed. It is painful to me that the video of Stephen's murder was used as a weapon. Those perpetrating abuse know the power of video as well as we do, which is why the activist with the camera always has a target on his or her back. But I am inspired by the millions of people who take that risk anyway and who, as a result, turn us all into witnesses. Over the past two years, Witness has provided media activists working inside of Syria and in the border regions with the knowledge and skills needed to continue their work by providing expertise around how to make safer and better media. Witness has been a steadfast partner to hundreds of activists who are getting these essential stories out while working under horrific risks. For this, we are deeply grateful. I wanna close with a reminder of what it means to honor someone. Honor is not retrospective. Honor is a commitment to the future. We want all activists to be safe, but we do not want them to stop. We are honoring them so that we can help them continue forward. Thank you.